14-year-old Justin Polari was upset when he came home on the evening of December 7, 2001. Whatever was upsetting Justin seemingly caused him to run away that night, and Justin has never been seen or heard from since. Hey guys, welcome to case 4 of Unjust Crimes. My name is Michelle and today I will be telling you about the disappearance of Justin Polari. Just to add a small disclaimer, I mean no harm or disrespect to any victim or family that I may talk about. This is simply information that I have collected online and am putting into one video. Justin Jonathan Polari was born on January 31st, 1987 and grew up in the village of De Barret, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but De Barret, Ontario, Canada. Justin's parents divorced when he was younger, and Justin was living in Hilton Beach, Ontario, with his dad, John, stepmom, Janice McLeod, and step-siblings when he ran away. Hilton Beach is a remote island village near Sault Ste. Marie in Ontario. It is located in the Algoma District of Ontario and is very close to Michigan in the United States. Justin is described as having blue eyes and a dimple in his chin. Justin's approximate height at the time of his disappearance was 5 foot 11 inches and he weighed approximately 140 pounds. Justin wore his hair in a 6 inch mohawk and his hair may be dyed black or blonde. Justin was also wearing two earrings in his left ear and heavy chain necklaces. Also, Justin may have been wearing a wooden name tag with the inscription of Woody. Also, Justin may go by the nickname Joe. Justin was known to be an avid skateboarder, and family and friends think he may frequent skateboarding areas. A troubled kid who struggled with his parents' divorce, Justin was known to have learning disabilities, which made him really not like school because, well, he struggled with it. It has been reported that Justin had a rough time growing up in the village of De Barret. Reportedly, Justin's mother gave custody of him to his dad when he was 11. Justin also had step-siblings in both his mother's and father's homes. Justin's dad, John, was a truck driver, and when he could not take Justin with him on the road, Justin would stay with relatives. Also, reportedly, Justin had recently lost his dog. Now, all of these combined are quite a lot to have on your mind when you are only 14 years old. Just a few months before Justin disappeared, he had written a note to his grade 9 teacher, saying, quote, I really hate school and the government. At class, I plan on trying until I get sick of it, then I'll give up and drop out when I'm 16." Unquote. On December 7, 2001, Justin came home angry and upset with a cut on his lip. Some reports say that he admitted to a fight. Other reports say he later denied it. Some reports also say that at some point that evening, Justin had lunged at his dad. Regardless, it was clear something was bothering Justin enough that night for him to run away from home. Justin's father, John, has said, quote, That's what we constantly wonder about. What in the world happened to him that night? Unquote. Now, I know a runaway teen in and of itself is not really that strange. What is strange about Justin's case is that he has never been heard from since. This was reportedly Justin's first attempt to run away. Now, typically, teens who do run away make more than one attempt, and most teens that actually do run away keep in contact with at least one person, even if it is just a friend. But Justin did none of this. He ran away and has made no contact with anybody since. The last official confirmed sighting of Justin Polari was at his home in Hilton Beach, Ontario, Canada before he ran away. 
Taking his backpack, some clothes, and his skateboard, Justin just vanished. Justin was last seen wearing dark blue or black baggy pants, a dark blue or black hooded sweater, and a black toque. He was wearing red or burgundy running shoes, and the temperature that night was below freezing. Using posters, bulletin boards, transport trucks, and billing envelopes, Justin's picture has been distributed across Canada and the United States throughout the years since his disappearance. In the early 2000s, Justin's picture and information filled the walls of grocery stores and post offices across Ontario. But really, in comparison to other missing persons cases, missing children, actually, Justin's disappearance did not receive a lot of media coverage. I am guessing this is because he was considered a runaway, but I mean still, he was only 14 at the time he ran away, so it should have received more attention. There is a lot of speculation surrounding Justin's disappearance that foul play took place because of how uncharacteristic his disappearance is in terms of other runaway teens. But I think it's important to note here that it is possible that Justin ran away the first time, started a new life, and never looked back. However unlikely that is, considering his age and other factors, it is still possible. A case manager for Child Find Ontario has said, quote, My feeling is he's out there. Unquote. This case manager also reportedly gets a lot of calls of Justin sightings, which she does forward to the OPP, or the Ontario Provincial Police. In 2003, this case worker reported on a recent sighting of Justin. A boy fitting Justin's description and four other kids stopped at the Metropolitan United Church on the corner of Church and Queen Streets in Toronto. This church is part of a network that feeds and houses hundreds of street kids. They were given food and clothing before apparently going to Panhandle at the Dundas Street bus station. An outreach worker at this church said, quote, He called himself Jay. He wore army pants, a mohawk haircut, and a backpack, unquote. On a gut feeling, the outreach worker searched the internet for photos of missing children. The worker spotted Justin's photo and called Child Find, but unfortunately this tip did not lead to finding Justin. But it is certainly a good sign of hope that he may be alive and well somewhere. After Justin ran away, his parents, grandparents, and other relatives would make the seven-hour drive to Toronto several times trying to find Justin. They would drive the streets of Toronto, talk to homeless kids, search homeless shelters, hang out at punk rock concerts, and skateboard hangouts. But unfortunately, Justin still has not been found. Justin's dad and stepmom would carry a briefcase that contained pictures and posters of Justin, letters and drawings of Justin's, and his parents would post these posters in shelters and drop-in centers around Toronto. All to no avail. Justin's parents have been reported to believe Justin was lured by the apparent glamour of living on the Toronto streets. Justin's dad, John, has said, quote, We really aren't in favor now of all the support that goes towards homelessness and shelters because it's created a lifestyle. The intention is good, but on the flip side, it has actually created a way for kids to live on the street, unquote. In 2005, a gas station attendant in Sault Ste. Marie, which is 67 kilometers from Hilton Beach, thought that he had spotted Justin getting into a Quick X truck around the time of Justin's disappearance. Unfortunately, this tip wasn't reported until four years later, leaving too much time for a lot of things to happen. But on May 16, 2005, the investigation into Justin's disappearance was reopened by the East Algoma OPP in conjunction with the Criminal Investigation Branch. Over a four and a half day period, a huge area was searched on St. Joseph Island with the Emergency Response Team and Canine Unit. Again, unfortunately, the search did not turn up any results. Throughout the years, there have been a couple of age-progressed photos of Justin that have been made available. 
Then in 2018, the OPP reopened its investigation again into Justin's disappearance. It was noted that officers would be conducting ground searches of the area where he was last seen, based on numerous interviews that were conducted following his disappearance. Although investigators had followed up on numerous alleged sightings since his disappearance, police are still appealing to the public for assistance in this investigation. It was also noted that the Forensic Identification Unit from Sault Ste. Marie and emergency response team members would be conducting interviews, searching the grounds and the house on St. Joseph's Island where Justin had went missing. What do you think happened to Justin? Did he run away and start a new life somewhere? Did he run away and encounter foul play somewhere along his travels? We simply don't know. There are a few theories that float around about Justin's disappearance. The first theory is that Justin's parents did something to make Justin run away. Now, I have to add here that this is entirely speculation, and there is nothing of public knowledge that I could find to substantiate this theory, and I think their attempts to find Justin in the years that have followed show how much they love and want their son back. Justin's parents started to receive harassing emails and calls, and unable to tolerate these accusations, they packed up and moved to Barrie, Ontario. They have kept their old phone number, though, with a message relaying their new number and address just in case Justin calls. The next theory is that Justin may have traveled to Michigan in the United States, which is only a short distance from where Justin lived in Hilton Beach. Coinciding with this theory is that it's possible Justin headed to a big city, not necessarily a city in Michigan, but maybe even somewhere like Toronto, only to end up being lost among the homeless population. The next theory, which is basically along the same lines as the last, and it is what Justin's family believes happened to him, is that Justin was heading towards Toronto. They believe the apparent glamour of Toronto street living was what lured Justin there. Another theory surrounding Justin's disappearance is that he is deceased. This theory is based on the amount of time that Justin has been away and the fact that he has never reached out in all of these years. Reportedly, there are locals who believe there are people in St. Joseph Island and Sault Ste. Marie who know what happened to Justin and the location of his remains. At the end of all these possible theories is the undeniable fact that Justin is still missing. His family wants and needs to know where their beloved son and brother is today. Justin is now, of course, of age, and he's able to stay away if he chooses to, but it would be a big relief for his family to know if he is okay. Justin's dad, John, has said, quote, We still look at every teenage kid every day. When we're out driving, we turn the car around so we can look a kid in the face, unquote. And this case remains open and under investigation by the East Algoma Crime Unit. If you have any information, anything big or small could help locate Justin please do contact the Ontario Provincial Police or OPP at 1-888-310-1122. You can also submit an anonymous tip through Crime Stoppers at www.canadiancrimestoppers.org slash tips. Or you can also call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS or 8477. As well, you can call Missing Kids at 1-866-KID-TIPS or 543-8477. Thank you so much for listening to this case today. If you would like to hear more cases like this, please subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up button, and maybe if you would be so kind as to leave a nice comment down below. If you would like to suggest cases to me, you can email me at unjustcrimes at gmail.com.